All right, that moves us on to new business, item five, which is our Doheny Village Zoning District update and draft EIR community workshop. And I assume we have a staff report for this. We do. Belinda Dinas <laughs> is um, here this evening, as well as we have our consultant and staff. So um, this is just an overview of the, of the EIR, not just, but it is. Um, no special actions being asked to the Planning Commission tonight. It's just for the benefit of um, the Planning Commission to learn about the details of EIR. Uh, before it's brought back to you for formal certification and also for the benefit of the public. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Good evening, Chair Nelson and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Belinda Dinas, Principal Planner, and I'm pleased to introduce to you to, to Mr. Eddie Torres from Michael Baker International, who is our consultant and lead project manager for the preparation of the environmental impact report for the Doheny Village Zoning Code update. Together, Eddie and I will provide some background information and project information on the environmental review process for this evening's community workshop. And I'll turn it over to Eddie. Great, thank you, Belinda. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. Eddie Torres of Michael Baker International. We've been working with the city on this project since the early days of the Roma plan. And uh, since that point, uh, put the brakes on a couple of times to involve the community with uh, different aspects of the project and to tailor it to the community. Uh, today, we're going to provide an overview of the uh, project, which Belinda will take on. And I'll provide an overview of the EIR, the summary of the findings, an overview of the mitigation measures, the overview of the public input, and the next steps. So as I'm sure you're familiar with, that's the outline of the project area, Doheny Village, and we took a comprehensive look at the project area and the surrounding environments. And I'll let Belinda give a brief overview of the project, which I'm sure you're pretty familiar with. So at our last planning commission meeting on April 26th, the commission reviewed the most recent zoning code draft. So the purpose of the update is to legalize existing uses and patterns of development, in order to allow rehabilitation and repurposing of existing structures as well as opportunities for new improvements over time. The zoning code update is a rezoning effort to establish a new chapter in the zoning, co in the zoning code called the Doheny Village Districts with development standards and land uses specific to the village. This is the proposed zoning map. In purple is the village commercial industrial, which would allow mixed use, light industrial, and commercial uses where light industrial uses had existed um, but have not been allowed since the adoption of the Dana Point Zoning Code more than 30 years ago and are some of the city's longest standing businesses. In red is the village Main Street where um, properties that front Doheny Park Road there are some existing properties with residential on upper floors that are currently not permitted. And so the intent is to allow mixed use rather than the existing sto zoning standards for big box retail, which is challenging for small lots that exist today. In brown is village commercial residential, which would allow horizontal mixed use, meaning that there could be commercial or residential uses allowed within this area. Currently, there are residential uses that are only allowed as accessory to primary uses or primary uh, to commercial or vertical mixed use. So existing residential properties wanting to improve and expand are limited because of their non-conforming status. At present, there are no changes proposed to the community facilities and recreation zoning districts. However, the city does recognize that a separate specific plan has been initiated at the bus yard site. These are the proposed land use designations, identifying the uh, proposed density and floor area for each of the um, areas specified. So as part of the project, the required entitlements would be the zoning code amendment, the general plan amendment, the LCPA, and the certification of the program EIR. Uh, next slide, please. So purpose of CEQA, really the purpose of CEQA is to look at the baseline environment of what's out there right now, look at what the potential change in environmental impacts is, and avoid or minimize any potential impacts as possible with mitigation measures, and really provide the public with a tool to review the project and provide comment uh, throughout the process. And uh, as we've been involved with this project for a number of years, there's been a large opportunity for the public to provide comment into the project and for us to incorporate the commentary into the design of the project itself. The other thing too is as this project is being used as a long-term plan for Dehaney Village, 
we set up the EIR to be programmatic in nature to look at the overall bigger level impacts to make the document a living document for the city to cheer off of in the future for future development that happens within Doheny Village. And as we see on the next slide, we've gone through a number of uh, steps in the process. We had the initial study notice of preparation, which was the broad overview of the project and description of the project and provided the public the input to take a look at what we're proposing and provide commentary. We received uh, comments on that and did incorporate those comments into the environmental impact analysis. Um, as you can see, there's numerous steps in the process for the public to provide input. So we took that initial study, looked at the commentary provided, tailored the analyses and technical studies, incorporated that, and provided the draft EIR, which is up for public review. Um, it started a couple of weeks ago and goes through June 9th. And uh, even though there's gonna be questions and comments on the project, we prefer everything to be in written, sent to Belinda. We wanna make sure we address all the comments fully in writing with the final EIR. The next step, as I said, is response to comments, which goes into the final EIR. That comes back to the Planning Commission and City Council, and ultimately the uh, Coastal Commission. And then the findings and resolution are adopted, and the project is, um, if it all goes well, approved. So we looked at, as CEQA requires, there's called the Appendix G checklist, which is a number of environmental topical areas, ranging from aesthetics to geotechnical, to hydrology, air quality, noise, land use, public services. And we took a comprehensive look in all of those. Um, you know, we, this is the EIR, double-sided, very comprehensive. The appendices are about this tall. Uh, this is basically a summary of all the studies we've done. We've done um, detailed technical studies of geotechnical, hydrology, water quality, air quality, noise, greenhouse gases, land use planning, aesthetics, tribal cultural resources, the consultation with that. And this is the compendium of all that's, that's happened. So. As far as that goes, it's a very comprehensive document that looked at the project, and as the time has gone by, we've tried to minimize and avoid as many impacts as possible. And I'll go into this in a little bit, but um, all of the impacts that are in the EIR have been determined to be um, no impact, less than significant, or less than significant with mitigation. There are no unavoidable impacts, and most of the mitigation measures deal with um, ways to avoid or minimize construction impacts with the project, such as air quality emissions or hydrology, water quality issues or geotechnical issues. As you've seen, those are you know, conditions that the city wants to deal with. And you know, we've dealt with the tribal and consultation process and incorporated their feedback into it too, comments from Caltrans, comments from other agencies involved too. So with that, we feel that the, uh, the project going forward provides the city a great roadmap. Like I said, most of the mitigation measures are for short-term impacts. The one that deals with uh, potential long-term impacts are vehicle miles traveled which is a new topic dealt with right now with uh, CEQA, with Senate Bill 743. And we've done the analysis with the city's traffic engineer, Lynn Scott Law and Greenspan, to provide a menu approach for residential and non-residential projects that provide the city flexibility and the residences and businesses in Doheny Village to provide the menu option to create the flexibility that reduce vehicle miles traveled. And so the public draft EIR is available for viewing here at City Hall in the Community Development Department. A hard copy of the draft document and the technical, technical reports in the appendices are at the front counter. The last of three uh, in the series of virtual office hours will be held this Wednesday on May 12th from 5 to 6 p.m. This meeting will feature a 10-minute presentation on the proposed public improvements of the Doheny Village Plan and the remainder of the hour will, will allow for open questions and answers um, and feedback from the public. The meeting link can be found on the project web, web page. Lastly, the city will be hosting a, a pop-up community workshop on Saturday, June 5th from, um, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. City staff will be available um, at outdoor booths with information on the Doheny Village Plan, as well as other planning efforts, such as the housing and public safety element, short-term rentals, and more. The event will take place at the public parking lot next to El Patio Cafe at the corner of Doheny Park Road and Domingo Avenue. Visitors are encouraged to take the trolley to Doheny Village, and the, uh, the trolley stops right across the street on Domingo. It should be noted that the date identified on the staff report on page um, four in the chart uh, should be noted as June 5th, not June 6th. 
So here's the schedule we have. Right now we're in the uh, public review period that ends June 9th, and uh, Planning Commission and City Council are headed towards the summer. That is flexible based upon how many public comments we get. We may get very few, we get, may get plenty, but uh, we're gonna make sure we address all those comments in writing and provide that within the final EIR and going to the uh, Coastal Commission in fall. And um, I wanted to reiterate our process with conducting the analyses. So like I said, CEQA is based upon the existing environment, what the potential impact is of the proposed development and how to minimize that. So there were numerous studies involved we went out to Dehaney Village and took a numerous number of noise measurements, uh, extensive photographic inventory. We went out and did traffic counts at numerous intersections. And that is fairly conservative because this was done pre-COVID when traffic patterns and everything else was at the normal level. Um, unsure how that may happen you know, post-COVID, but that's a provided a conservative estimate of the potential impacts. Uh, geotechnical analyses, percolation studies, hydrology and runoff studies, um, and archaeological reconnaissance survey, paleontological studies. So the full gamut of the environmental resource areas were conducted and to provide the city with a good baseline of what the Doheny village area is comprised of. Um, so city staff did receive some public comments via emails late today uh, around four o'clock this afternoon. And so copies of those emails have been uh, distributed to the planning commissioners. Uh, and please send written comments. Uh, the public's welcome to contact me directly, either via email or um, send here to City Hall. And that public comment period does close June 9th at the end of business at 5 o'clock p.m. With that, um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission receive public comments and provide feedback on the Doheny Village Zoning Code update draft EIR. And Eddie and I are available to, uh, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you, uh, Linda and Mr. Torres. Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Oakle. Linda, I believe you said you had the office hours, like three of them total. So what was the, partition, the participation from the public at the first two that you've held? Sure, so the first one was actually uh, very successful. We had maybe about, I wanna say 16 or 18 or so on the call. Um, in that short hour, and so I'm actually working with Allison to post that on our uh, YouTube playlist for Doheny Village so that you can take a look at that. The first conversation was on um, ch recent changes to the code that had been presented to the Planning Commission. So um, uh, many of the working group members were there to help facilitate that as well. Um, the second one, which was last week, it was less attended. There were only three of us there, but we had a great discussion as well. So. Um, this, as I mentioned, this week on Wednesday, we will cover the capital improvement plan and um, future public improvements in the village. Commissioner Gabbard. C could you spend a couple minutes talking about the differences between a program level EIR and a project level EIR, just for education of anybody that may be watching this in the future so that they, so they understand that there's a difference sure. in mitigation? No problem. Uh, yeah, the difference, CEQA allows different levels of uh, an environmental impact report, and typically for a larger plan document like this, we look at it programmatically because we know the overall development area and potential development impacts from a higher level overview. We don't know the specific de development of somebody on parcel B if they're going to build up to 2,000 square feet or so. So we try to provide it at that higher level, that way when subsequent development comes through, We've looked at the worst case and we mitigated it so that way they don't have to go do additional environmental review. And so a project level is if you have, you know, potentially you know the, the hotel down at the harbor, where you know what's gonna happen there. And the specific development potential, the traffic ingress, egress, the score footage and so on, so you can mitigate it specifically towards that. There, it, that's the project, but we look at this as the overall macro level and make it a useful tool for subsequent development coming through the road. So it's, it's really the, the project level where you get into things like whether we're going to have a, a right turn lane or we're going to increase our sewer line or we've got to increase water capacity. Right. And we looked at utilities and public services. We look, worked with the city's public works department closely to look at the capacity of the water lines, the sewer lines. We did a water supply assessment with the Southwest Water District. But for instance, a you know project level EIR may look at the project and say, 
we're going to be grading, you know, 3,000 cubic yards of square of dirt. We're going to be having, you know, two dozers and a tractor, and here we're going to have this sound over right here. And it's really down to the very minute level of detail where this one, we kind of look at it conservatively to make sure that coming down the road, if you fall within the envelope of what we looked at, the subsequent review and environmental analysis is minimized, and that provides a benefit to the community and to the developers who are going to be building down in Tahini Village. Thank you. Commissioner Donor, Vice Chair Donor. When you're uh, <clears throat> dealing, you said you're going to respond to everybody in writing. So when the historical society says we don't think you should do anything on the coast highway, is that something you've already studied or is that something to be uh, amended? In the analysis, we conducted a uh, archaeological, paleontological, and historical resources inventory and analysis. Uh, we didn't really get any comments related to historic resources during the NOP comment period. And so we would take a look at that, see what valid concerns are there, see if it poses an environmental topical area. Uh, numerous times the comments that come into a project do not deal with environmental resource areas. So we'll take a look at that and respond as we can, but we're really looking at responding to the environmental issues and seeing if our you know, analysis and mitigation does go through it. But like I said, we've been involved with the project for a number of years and dealt with the community and the stakeholders, so I think we are in a pretty good place with this. Yeah, a couple quick ones here. I, I, I think a, one thing I want to make sure that um, we're super clear on, and I think it's an important element, is that in order for you to do anything, you need the comments in writing, that it's critical that um, you know public testimony, as important as that is, in response to the EIR, you need to have those uh, comments written, directed either to staff or to yourself so that you have something to actually respond to. Is that correct? In meetings like this, we take great notes, but it's great to have it in a written fashion. So what we do in the final EIR is, the final EIR is composed of the draft EIR, and then we take all the comment letters and then bracket them, and then respond to each individual comment in writing. And if we have any kind of changes with the analysis or recommendations, we provide what's called an errata you know, double strike through underline to clarify the text, and then we provide the mitigation monitoring program, so that way when development does occur, we you, the city has a checklist of, okay, here's our topical area, here's our mitigation, here's how it's applied, and it's a checklist that makes it easy for staff uses and resources to track. But yes, it is appreciated to get the comments in writing. Okay, great. Um, and I, you talked on the type of EIR, so that's good um, information. The um, one question I had was when you do your analysis for the program level EIR, what's your build out assumption? Is it full? You're making an assumption, I, mean, I think you use the word worst case, that every site is developed out at its full capacity uh, within the zoning? Is that normal? Yeah, we took a look at that and worked extensively with city staff on developing a build out list. And we looked at the build out plus also cumulative conditions. So we have what's called a, a cumulative project list. So we look at the project impacts of the project itself plus also the combination of all other development that's in the geographic area. And with that, we looked at the projects that the city staff forecasted in Dana Point. We looked at uh, consulted with surrounding cities too, San Juan Capistrano and all those surrounding neighborhoods and uh, developed an extensive list. Our cumulative project list, I think, is about 31 projects. So it, it is looking at the full build out of the area. Okay. Um, I know I did a couple other quick questions here. I think one of the things that is always curious to me, and um, the lack of attendance tonight maybe speaks to it, is are there any major outstanding um, areas of controversy at this point with the plan that you could speak to? Not that we've seen so far. Um, so far we've received um, predominantly uh, positive uh, feedback and, and support for the project. Great. Um, and then as it relates to the letters that we got tonight, I know that I'm sure that these will be addressed um, as part of the response to comments, or would they? Because some of them don't seem to be CEQA related. They're more uh, zoning code related. City staff will take a look at the comments and evaluate um, whether uh, modifications are needed for the zoning code update. Okay, perfect. All right, I think um, I think that's it for me. I have no more no more questions or comments. So with that, I think it's just a file, achievement file. Any other comments or questions from? Okay, great. Um, with that, thank you very much for your time tonight and uh, staff report. And that moves us on to 
I think the end, let me make sure here. Yep, that is it, unless we have any, do we have any staff reports? Nothing tonight, thank Great. you. Uh, commissioner comments? Nothing, all right. 